person and he wanted to know from Jesus, he wanted to achieve, right? Again, the outcome. He said he was a good person too. He was all those definitions. He was a good person. He was a good person. He lived within the guide rails. He had never. He hadn't cheated. He followed all the any of those things. He followed all the rules to become financially successful. Mm -hmm. So he and just he was rich like that. He probably inherited from his parents. You know, so again, that that shows he's in a very what we call privileged position. Right. Right. He didn't squander his the the money that was left to his parents. Mm -hmm. So hey, he deserved it, right? He did all made all the right decisions. So then he came to Jesus because now, amongst his achievements in this world, he was ready to achieve God, right? Mm -hmm. He's smart, he's capable, he's affluent. He's ready to achieve God, right? Jesus started to talk to him about the law for a quick moment. Before that, in another account of it. And the dude said, hey, man, I've been following these things since I was a young boy. So in essence, just like Andy Stanley, he had followed all the guide rails, all the things that his parents had taught him to do to give him a good life. And Jesus said, okay, now take all of your stuff, sell it and give your stuff away. And then everybody knows the story, but I want to look at it from a different perspective. Jesus then told him to get, give up all of his stuff, sell it to the poor and follow him. So in essence, he gave him the opportunity he asked, he gave him what he asked for. The man was dismayed and he bounced. Mm-hmm. Because ultimately, in our pursuit of good, which this show is about, you can be a good person. You can be good at something. You can be a very clean person. You can be very organized. You can be financially successful. You can have great influence over people and able to command the things in this world that you want and create a comfortable life around you and be able to make all the moves you want to make but be good for nothing. And you can be nice too. I'm just saying, you can be on top of all those things that you've created and what you were talking about. You can still be nice to every single person you meet. You know, and still... Be good for nothing. Be good for nothing. If it's just about being polite, having good manners. I mean, these are these are things that I thought about. The problematic things that I see in people who engage in the culture like that. You know, um, and it's typically people that have privilege, like most Americans really do, compared to the rest of the world. I mean, if we're right. really if we're really honest about it, you know. Um, but you can be nice even and only be within your small circle. And what good is it? I don't know. Bring up Matthew twenty two thirty seven, 37. And then I'm going to tell you guys about me. I'm going to give you my confession. I didn't come here just to talk about scripture. I didn't come here just to talk about these lofty ideas. I came in for a revelation because in in it, I hope that you find a revelation. Could you bring up Matthew 22, 37 for me? And then I'm going to tell you about me. I'm going to tell you about, and most of the people that are listening to me have a relationship with me. You have a, you know, we have a certain amount of respect. You have a certain uh, feeling towards my level of integrity. Twenty-two thirty-seven. Yes. Says Jesus replied, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind." Okay, and then read the next one. Um. <laughs> That's not the way this website works. There's no worries. We know the next one. Yeah. We know the next but one. But you just. Yeah, but 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 I'll give you the opportunity to get so the. So the greatest commandment was to love your lo- the Lord, the Most High, not him, but his Father, with all your might and your heart and your... But what was the second one? 
Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. You know what I used to always think that that meant? Now I'm going to talk about my person. I used to always think that, hey, you know, love love is an emotion. You know, you know, because we're Americans. We were taught love is an emotion. It's a feeling, right? So love the Lord, right? You get kind of get that point. And then love your neighbor. It was kind of, I was like, well, it sounds cool. It sounds overly nice. But what it's talking about is not just about the guardrails of you growing up and doing exactly what somebody told you to do. It's talking about going out and actually being good, of good to someone else. If you're not doing that, our our vision of Christianity or Islam or whatever religion these days is that if you stay in the guardrails, you can be a good person and still be isolated. No, you can't. You can do all the right things and do it in your home, not mess around. As long as you're doing good for yourself and you hear the popular adage, I can't do nothing for you unless I can do something for me. Well, guess what? You're not a Christian. You're not the. You're not a follower. You're a follower of Christianity. I'm going to say that you're not a follower of Jesus because Jesus didn't just sit home and do good for himself. Now, let me talk about me. When I think about my pursuit of positivity, choosing positivity, this journey, it was only to, for a means to an end. It's only to manipulate my life so I can say, look, God, I'm doing what you told me to do. Now give me a good life. Anytime something happened to me, whether it was life or death, losing someone, I would always say to God, look what I've done. But I believe in you. But I, because really, it wasn't about being good to others, which is the second part of it. He said that that is just as important as the, you're not, you haven't even started to be a follower of Jesus if you're not doing something for somebody else. If you're just constantly perpetuating your own life, your own thoughts, your own agenda, you are good but good to no one, good for nothing. When I think about as nice as I am and and, and, and as I try to be or use my personality to get along, to be in harmony with other people, it's really selfish. I'm really only just trying to get what I want. And even if I create that, you create a picture. You're like, I'm a good parent. I take care of my kids. I clean my house. I pay my taxes. I... You're really just trying to create a world that's good for you. You really just want people to say, he's a good person. He's a good father. He's a good sister. He's a good mother. But at the end of the day, if you are not putting yourself out to help other people, if other people isn't your aim, then you are good, but you're good for nothing. And as I think about 48 years of my life, At one point, I didn't care about being good. It was like, whatever, the attitude. And and then as I felt I was being positive, it was the same, just masked into something else. Under the guise of being good, I'm good. So let me have a good life. Let me have prosperity. Let me have love. Let me have success. Let me have adoration, respect. It still is, is good for nobody. But me. So I, today as I sat down, I listened to that, I realized my own BS. That I am a manipulator. That I use what my abilities to try to manipulate the outcome. When when Jesus was telling us, the outcome is not yours. They even came to him one time and somebody said he's good. He said, I'm not good. It's only one that's good. If you are a follower of Jesus, you are not just good. You're not just living in the guardrails. You are pressed. You have a self of urge, a feeling of urgency to do good for someone other than yourself. The outcome doesn't belong to you. Just think about Job. When Job went through all Job, when Job was broken down, he was like, yo, aren't Aren't I perfect? He couldn't conceptualize. He had done everything he was supposed to do for himself 
and even others, and he still was going through difficulty because he thought his hedge was his behavior. As upright as he was, he was trying to do what? Manipulate the outcome of life. He wanted to ball out. And in American society, we're taught that that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to use our intelligence, our influence, our goodness, our to manipulate the outcome. It's what we see. That's what we see every day on, on Instagram. People manipulating the outcome and showing you what it looks like. It's not about what they're doing for somebody else. They're being good for the sake of their own self-perpetuation. They're manipulators. I'm a manipulator. When I get up in the morning, I'm not thinking about somebody else. I'm thinking about how I can make this day bend to my will. Be as comfortable doing the things that I want to do. And as long as I'm not doing, as long as I'm not being hurting or killing somebody or then I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. And my life's supposed to be good. These people died for other people. They died for people they never even met. They died for an idea. Just think about that. They were willing to die for an idea. When the most of us are just self-perpetuating. We're thinking about the best, our favorite show that we're going to watch on our favorite streaming app. We can drive by in the street people who have no food. We can know people in your own circle who are suffering. It doesn't matter if it doesn't spill over into your reality. We're manipulators of the outcome. It blew my mind. Because I thought I was a good person. And that being a good person was enough. As I'm, I'm thinking about my mom. Of the things she went through. I'm saying. Well wasn't she a good person? She never felt like. I never once heard her say. Like she. Or forgive me the idea. Like she felt like. She was being cheated. Because of what she's done. Or who she was. I shouldn't have had to go through this. It was ne She never gave me that impression. Right? Like she felt like she wasn't getting her share. Aren't I a good person? What do you think? Um, yeah, it's definitely a problem with the way our society thinks. And we can talk about where that thinking comes from. Because our whole society was built on a small minority group of people that thought just the same. How can I manipulate the day so that I can do what I want to do so that I can have safety in this world and not have to worry about um, losing my life? I guess that's the biggest, that's the biggest fear anybody has. Right. I don't know. I mean, that's not the, 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 but I'm saying like, so when that happens, I mean, in order for us to maintain a lifestyle like this, there are people in India and China working for pennies, you know, whatever, you know, and then we're, you know, this is just we're seeing disparities in the world, right? And then, but you aren't, you know, in America, we're, we're very insulated. And with the arrival of the internet and everything, seeing everything all over the world, clicking on people's social media and be able to see someone, just how their life is like in another country. You know, um, you, when you see disparities in society, um, you have to be affected by them somehow, right? Most of the time, I'm not. Most of the time, I just change the channel. Most of the time, I just change the channel. Most of the time, I just change the channel, man. And 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 it, but it, and, and it's just so interesting because in Galatians fifteen thirteen, it talks about 
Christians called. It's a decree to serve one another. Right?